Hello and welcome to Platypus Scotsman. Um, yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Platypus Scotsman. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. And let's be truthful, this is like take 26. It is getting incredibly hard to do this, so I'm gonna... <laughs> I can't even do that. <sighs> oh man. <sighs> Hello, welcome to Platypus Scotsman. Hope you're having a fantastic day today because I'm having a hard time with this opener. I can't tell you how many takes this is. But anyway, we're going to get into doing a well today and hope you enjoy it. Hope you get something out of it. Every town should have a well and this town's going to have a well. I'm going to do a grim dark board eventually. I've already got one piece done. This is my second piece and I have another one in the works and I have a few more that I want to do. So without further ado, because this is brutally painful today, uh, being on the camera and speaking, uh, let's go. So every creepy rundown town needs a whale. Yeah, what I did is I got some foam core, cut the circle out uh, that matches this, an X-Acto blade. Uh, I want it with, uh, with this width. And then I have a bunch of leftover foam bricks from when I did the house. Cut them the inside off of a 45 and I'm just gonna start gluing them around. Don't quite need to do a 45. I'm gonna make some green stuff now just so I can make the teddy bear. So just twist it, cut equal parts, twist it and mold it until it turns green. I don't work with green stuff a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm just making some balls, kind of shaping out a, a teddy bear, putting it on here and gluing it on, then I'm gonna smooth it out. So I'm just rolling the feet now, kind of tapering the ends so I can attach it and then just kind of be like a little teardrop. And then I'm just gonna attach the legs and nose and ears. Problem is my fingers are gonna get in the way, so I'm giving you the idea of what I'm doing. What I did is made little parts and glued them on there. You can see my fingerprints on it, but I don't really care because now I'm going to just add a little bit of texture. Not a lot, because I'm going to hide a lot of my inability to sculpt with uh, painting. My excuse will be it's a primitive toy. Uh, it doesn't have the modern technologies we have now. That's my excuse. This is basswood. I went ahead and put uh, wood grain in it with a wire brush. Just moved it back and forth. And then I went off and measured an inch and a half. I already cut one. And I'm just going to use a jewelry saw to cut the other one. These will be my side posts. I'm just going to eyeball a hole or a place I'm going to just drill a hole and then I'll match it on the other one. What I've done now is I've used a 1 16th styrene plastic rod and I've shoved it through the holes and then space it just enough apart where it's the width of the well that I want to glue it on and then just leave this out hanging here so I can glue uh, like a handle or something to it. This is some twine I picked up at the craft store. Uh, this is a Hearst Art Smold. Uh, you could make your bucket, but I already had one. I, cut, I, I want the bucket to kind of be damaged anyway. So I'm going to glue some solder to it on the side, and then I'll attach this to it as well. And then I'm going to wrap that around that uh, with some of this twine and look, make it look like the bucket got damaged. I cut some pieces for the base and glued them together and just now I'm gonna let them wait till they dry. I'm making the pitch for the roof or the just the top. Not nothing fancy. And I want it about that wide. And I'm just 45 in the ends. So it'll so it'll just hang off and then I'll make some notches. And I've made the lines in this one already using this template right here. And I'm just gonna cut these up. 
I use this right here as the 45 just to get the first initial cut. When these are cut and fixed, I'm just going to use the, the mat right here just to uh, make sure I get the angles right. I'll glue them together. I'll see where this lines up, so I'll show you right when I get to that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some glue here. I'm just going to use this to line the angles up so I get it right and just follow the inside lines. When that's dry, I'll just make a piece right here just to get a little bit more support and do the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this onto this frame. What I've done, I've already measured halfway in between and just put down marks. And I've cut a bunch, uh, some 45, some little pieces I'm just gonna use for supports. So I'm gonna attach this now. The idea when I do this, I kind of want to have it off-centered. I don't want that little teddy bear or deformed rabbit or whatever it is. I want it off to one side just so it has more character. I don't know about character, just so it's not centered. What I'm going to do now is glue part of the roof on, just so I can start. I kind of I put two notches in here. All I did was just eyeball it to where that lined up with this right here. Got a pencil, marked, marked, and then cut it out. I went and hit the handle with a quick coat of paint just to have it primed. I'm going to glue this to the side of the well. Originally, I wasn't going to have a base on this, but to help with the theme, I think I'm going to put a base on it. So I'm going to use sculpt mold like I did on the cottage. But like I said, you can refer back to the cottage video for this. Uh, in fact, a lot of things I'm going to be doing with this one, I am going to actually be using the cottage video as a reference because there's a lot of things as far as terrain goes that I'm going to be doing this exact same thing on. I don't want a, a big base or a big piece, but I, I want to be able to have enough on it to where I can add to the theme. The base coat for this arm is going to be Gene Stiller purple. I want the whole hand to be dark, so I'm just going to paint some purple on it and then do some shades and different things like that. What I'm going to do now is I've cut a bunch of strips of balsa wood. And I use balsa wood a lot because I have a lot. I've collected it through the years and I've had some given to me. So I have a lot of balsa wood. But you can use other material too, like XPS foam. It all depends what you want to use. But I just have to happen to have balsa wood. It's something I've used for a long time. So it's that's my medium that I choose. But I'm going to just plank the sides. I'm going to plank the top. And after it's all dry, that's when I'll go ahead and do the grain in it with a wire brush. But I'm just going to plank this and then, like I said, plank that so I can start to do some of the shingles. I want to paint the palm area Evil, Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to cover the entire thing with Drucci Violet now. And then I'm going to go back with uh, Draken Nightshade and then we'll see how it goes after that. I want this arm to be really dark. So that's what, why I'm doing it this way. Now that these are mostly dry, I'm just gonna start shaving them down to where they're even with the supports that are already there. Probably should have wiped some of the glue away, but it's not completely dry, dry enough that I can do this. And I just put a new blade in so it's really sharp, so it makes it easier. And instead of slicing straight down like that and putting pressure, kind of treat like a saw. I just found it works a little bit better, but maybe I'm delusional and don't really know that. But anyway, support up here because it's putting pressure and you don't want to bust down here. And just go slowly. It's not a, I wouldn't put a lot of pressure on it. And yes, I could have cut it out more precise before I did this, but I was lazy and didn't do that. And I've done this before and it's just, that way I got a for sure edge with it. And it's not that big of a deal. And I've been impatient with part of this build. Uh, I could have probably built this whole entire roof section before gluing it onto the onto here, so I didn't have to worry about having the stress of holding it down. But I didn't. And now I'm just going to glue the sides on, or whatever the crap they're called, the slats, slates. I don't know what they're called. I'm making stuff up now. The violet's done now, so I'm going to do the Drakenoff Nightshade. I 
I'm gonna start putting the shingles on. Just make sure you have the line or the seam cover. Uh, oh, geez, I can't even talk. Just make sure you're alternating your seams. All right, I've got the hand as dark as I want it to be. So now I'm just gonna go through with some purple. Minorly highlight, I don't want it to be overpowering. And then I'll put some red on the palm as well. I'm gonna use sandstone now and just do the claws and just bone going through the wrist. What we do now is uh, just put some CP on it, see how it looks, and then maybe lighten some things up or put more CP on it. Okay, I added the shingles and I went through and made some claw marks and tore them up a little bit. And now I'm gonna paint the shingles. I'm gonna paint it a burnt umbar and I'm gonna mix some water with it just so it, run, it, it seeps in all the cracks better. All right, now the roof is painted, it's not quite dry, but I don't really care. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put Nolan oil on it, uh, just to darken it up. I want this to be dark and creepy. So that's why Nolan oil is going on here. And Nolan oil will also help fill in the areas that I did, wasn't able to get or didn't try hard enough to get with the paint and cover that up as well. So I'll do this and then I'll get back to you. The top's not quite dry yet, but I'm gonna start painting the brick down here. I'm gonna do a hippo gray on it. I want everything, like I said, to be dark. I'm gonna do a coat of known oil over all the brick and probably I might even actually hit the wood again. Uh, well, I'm gonna hit the wood again now that it's completely dry. But yeah, I'm just gonna do this, cover it all up, see how it looks, maybe even darken it more. Cause I really want the, the brick to be dark. So I might hit it with a couple layers, see how that goes. Anyway. I'm gonna put a little color back into the roof with uh, some dry brushing of brown iron oxide. Normally I do a lot of dry brushing or different coats, but I really don't want to on this because I, I kind of, like I said before, I want to keep it dark, well, grim dark. But I'm going to do a cabinet gray. It's kind of a medium gray. I don't want to do a lot. And I just want to kind of really bring out some of the edges. And I also want to bring out where the claws are at too, or where the, some of the claw marks happened. Uh, I might actually go back and darken those claw marks just to make them so they can stand out better. I finished with the gray and also just came down here and dry brushed some gray on that stonework as well. And now I'm gonna hit it with some uh, sepia. I'm just gonna kind of go around and spot some areas in the, on the well itself just to give it a brown hue or a darker hue. And so not everything's so uniform. Mostly in the bottom part of the bricks and around the base here, and around the teddy bear or rabbit or whatever you wanna call it. What I'm gonna do now is go around with some Antonio camo shade and just green some things up. Especially inside the well, make it more slimy and gross. The base paint for the teddy bear is going to be XV88. Like I said, I want this kind of light. I went through and painted the metal with lead belcher, lead belcher, <laughs> metal. Anyway, 
And then I did some iron oxide over top of it. I also did it around here as well. And now what I'm gonna do is just paint Agrax Earthshade over the teddy bear, darken it up a little bit, but I don't want it too dark. I'm gonna dry brush some raw sienna on the teddy bear. I'm gonna dry brush some sandstone, but I'm only gonna do it on the edges and the belly. I just super glued the claw in. When it's all done, I'll put some of this in the bottom of it just to shine it up down there. I'm gonna do the foliage and everything the same way I did the cottage. So I'll put a little tab up there and you can go and see how I did everything there. Anyway, um, that's what I'm gonna do next and then uh, I'll show you the final result. All right, just to go over a few things. I did some uh, various tufts and then I did the ground up uh, leaves and I did that over here around in certain places. I did the vines. This is all stuff you can find in the cottage tutorial, same with up here, this clumps right up here. And this is just the static grass down here. I did up here and, I, and then I painted it. Did a little bit of the sepia on it. That's pretty much all it is. It's just a lot of the same stuff, same methodology that I did with the cottage. So um, that's pretty much all. Anyway, there you have it. So that's a wrap on the well. Uh, if you hear my dog barking, my son brought over their new little kitty and my dog is freaking out upstairs. So I apologize for that, but eh, it is what it is. Anyway, it's all done. Uh, hope you enjoyed If you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them below. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, very much appreciate it. If you like this enough, then uh, subscribe to it. Uh, the channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you get notifications. But anyway, if you want to see pictures of this or more pictures of it, you can go to our Instagram account, which is Platypus Scotsman, and you'll see pictures there with all our other portfolio and things like that. We also have Twitter, same name, Platypus Scotsman. We also have our Facebook. Uh, the one thing with the claws is I did the claws with an X Acto blade. I just kept going down the same path with an X Acto blade and just kind of tearing things up. Other than that, I'm very happy with this, and uh, I think it'll be just a fun centerpiece to. The board that i end up doing and normally i wouldn't do uh the piece of the anything around it but i want to kind of drive the the theme home a little bit so i did want a base i want, I want to be able to have those types of things on there if you feel like this channel gives you some value maybe think about jumping over on patreon and supporting us so we can continue to do this and uh bring you more videos in the future but anyway uh that's about all i have uh, like i said if you uh oh yeah if you like it share it I uh, appreciate that. Uh, get the word out there. Let other people know. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. But I uh, hope you have a good night. Hope everything's treating you well. Hope you can take something out of this and put it in your hobby and uh, utilize it. Uh, if not, it's just a fun, creepy piece. But anyway, uh, have a good night. And remember what my mother used to always say, and I truly believe it, that anyone can do art. Ciao.